Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we will be creating C4 architectural diagram. What is C4? A C4 diagram is a graphical representation of a software system's architecture designed to simplify communication and understanding for different stakeholders. It uses an hierarchical structure and a specific notation to visualize the system's key components and their relationships. The concept of C4 means context, container, component, and code. These are the main constituents of the C4 diagram. The first one, which is the C1, is the context. The context shows the system in its broader context, including users, external systems, and high-level goals. Then C2, which is the containers. The container decomposes the system software into containers or applications to be run, captures the high-level technology choices and components. Then C3 is the components. Component depicts the individual component within each container, detailing their specific responsibility. Then C4, which is the code. Code can be used to zoom into specific components and showcase their internal structure or implementation details. This uses class diagrams. Taking a look at this diagram, you can see the breakdown of the context, the container, the component, and then also the code. The context in this example will contain things like the very system itself, that is, for instance, an internet banking system, the users, the external systems like payment gateways, email system frameworks, uh, mainframe banking system and all that. We can take a look at an expanded context here and you can see this is the application we are doing a C4 diagram for and these are all the external systems and users that interact with it. In the big picture, this is represented as a context. Then the application, which is the internet banking system, is zoomed in and inside the applications are different containers. Containers are like services, which shows the technology choices for the application and the logical grouping of functionality within the system. An expanded look into the container will contain containers like web application container, single sign-on container, API application containers, the database container, and many more. From the container, we pick a granular details of each of the containers. And in this instance, we have a container that is called API application, which is a combination of the single page application and mobile app application. We break down that into the API call containers components. So in that container, we have all these components that makes all the API calls. We have sign in component, we have reset password component and all that. Again, you can see in the diagram, we have single page container, we have mobile container, we have database container, and the API container is now expanded to show the components, the details of the API container, which contains components. Again, from the context, a detail of the application is broken down to containers and level two, and a detail of the containers is broken down to components in level three, and from level three, the component is broken down to the code, which is illustrated with a class diagram, which shows the details and the classes that interface with each other in the components. The C4 model is a high level breakdown of the overall system application from the context to the container, to the component, and then down to the very code. Hello, and welcome back. Let's take a look at C4 context diagrams. The keyword used for context diagram includes this list. One, we have person. Parameters for person is an alias name a label, and then optional parameters in there. You can have description, sprite, and all. And then also person, you can have external person, that is person, ext. You have systems that also follows the same parameters like person. And we have system DB for database, for system queue, external database system, external 
queue system, and then we have boundaries. Boundaries are groupings of all the other systems and persons that was initially listed. And to define a boundary, we have the parameter for alias, label, and then you can have some other optional parameter. And you can have just boundary or enterprise boundaries or system boundaries. Let's take a look at that in our code. The first keyword to create a context is C4 context. The C4 context lets the system know that you're about to create a context. And then we can also have a title with a keyword title and then the description of the context that you want to do. In this instance, we are creating a C4 for an internet banking system. We're going to start with an enterprise boundaries, which takes in an alias and a label and this optional parameters. The enterprise boundary contains all the other groupings and components in our context diagram. I'm going to start by typing enterprise underscore boundary, and then I will add an alias of B0, and then give it a label of, I'm just going to put a label there, and then I'm going to open up a curly brace so every other component that the enterprise boundary contains will be here. And we're going to start with the first entry here. I'm going to start with person who is a user of the system and is going to have the alias customer A and then a label of banking customer A. And then I'm going to put a description also, a customer of the bank you know, just put some description and cover it up. And then you can see it here. It shows that we have an enterprise boundary. It shows that it's an enterprise boundary. And then we have a person. This actually shows person. And then it shows me the label. And then it makes the customer A as the alias, which is basically like the identification for that customer. And I'm going to have another customer, which will be customer B and a label. I'm not going to add a description because that is optional. And then I'm going to have also another customer, but this is an external customer. Now, if you look at, let me comment this out. For normal users, it's showing me a dark blue user icon. But for external customer, if I put in the details, which will be customer C, you see, it's going to be gray. That's why we use the underscore EXT. Let's add another customer, which is customer D. You would notice that I added a line break in the description and it's accepted that line break. I'm also going to add a system. A system takes in the same parameter like the person. So I will say system with the alias system AA and internet banking system, which is the label, and then also allows customer to view information about internet banking system. That's the description. And because it's a system, you can see it shows as a light blue icon here. Let's show a connection between customer A and system AE. Let me comment out this so that I can see it look bigger. So I have between customer A and system A. I want to create a relationship. I'm going to do that outside the boundary. And I'll type the word REL. Then I'll type customer A and then system AA. That is customer A uses system AA. If it is a bi-directional relationship, which it is in this instance, it will be by rel and you will see the pointing arrow at both sides. And then um, if you can see it, actually it's quite small. You're going to see that the word uses is in between them. Okay, so let's, um, because we're going to be doing a lot of this, I'm going to uncomment all this and then add another enterprise boundary inside the enterprise boundary we already have. So it's going to be enterprise boundary and this enterprise boundary will be B1. The first one was B0 and I'm just going to call it boundary. And because it's a boundary, I'm going to open up color braids 
and have all the systems that I want under this boundary, you, it's going to throw an error until you put in a system there. And I'm going to start with an external system database, external DB underscore EXT. I'll call the alias system E and then give it a label of mainframe banking system. This and then also a description of what it does. We have another boundary. You can see the bank boundary that I just created. And underneath the bank boundary is the mainframe banking system. It's quite small and it is showing as gray because it is an external system database. If I take this out now, you see it shows as blue. But if I put the EXT, it shows as external. Uh, I notice I put the description in the wrong place. Um, it's not supposed to be in the relationship. Description is supposed to be here. Sorry for that. That's the description for system DBX. Inside this boundary, let's create another boundary, this time a system boundary, which I'll call B2, then open it up, up curly brace, and then put in a system in there. Uh, this time it's going to be called system A. That is for banking A. And then I'm going to have another um, system under this. So right in here, we have two systems. Now let me create a by relationship between uh, system A and then the system E. So I'm going to do that here. I'll say by rel between system AA and system E. And that means um, system AA uses system E. And you can see that direction. The system AA uses system E. Now, inside the second enterprise system, I'm going to create another external system down here and then one more system database right here. I can still create a relationship between any of the system. Let's say uh, system AA uh, connects to system uh, C, sends an email to system E. So, and it's a one-way relationship. So, I'm going to say system AA and system C, those are the two systems. And then the connection or the relationship is that it sends email. And then I'll give this relationship an external tag, which is SMTP. If you check out the relationship documentation, you will see that it is from, to, and then the label, and then whatever description and other optional parameters that you can put in. That's why we have SMTP here as a description. Let's also have one more relationship. I'm just going to put that here. System C to system A and sends a mail to system A. And that is illustrated here. Let me comment it out so you will see the diagram. There was a relationship here. When I take this out again, you see the relationship. The C4 diagram is an experimental diagram in MAMI.js. And the syntax may change in the future. The context diagram has the enterprise boundary that contains person systems and other uh, enterprise boundaries or system boundaries as the case may be. And it also contains the database system, the external system, and um, we can also have a boundary. And a boundary is also a way to group context systems together. And for this boundary, I'm just going to add a system queue. I haven't done system queue. You can add a system queue. Uh, let's add two system queues. The first is a normal system queue. This time I'm going to add a system queue that is external. I'll add the alias label and some descriptions that the system queue may have. And that you can see here, we have a normal system queue and an external system queue. Other things you can do is to change the style of the C4 diagram. Uh, use the keyword update element style to update a particular um, element in the, in the context diagram. So for instance, I'm going to update the customer A and I'm going to say font color with a dollar sign. 
should be read. Let's cut out a bit of the code. And then for all the relationship that is no longer defined, I'm going to comment it out also. Maybe just cut it out so you can see the change. And you can also add more parameters for the styling. I can say uh, dollar sign BG color should be gray. I can change that here. You see, it changes to gray. And also add the border. Border color should be red. Let's put back all the diagram. And let's do another update. So we have update element. And this time we will style the relationship. And the relationship we want to style is the relationship between A and AA. Customer A and um, system AA. And the text color for that will be blue with a line color. Remember to put the dollar sign with a line color of blue and an X offset of five. The update element updates any of the elements in the context diagram. And we also have updates the relationship to update the lines, the colors of the lines. I'm going to put two of that here. And you can see here, update rail style between A and C. And then it has this information, the color text, the line text, and the text color and the line color in the relationship. And I know this looks a little bit small. You probably wouldn't see it here, but when I open up this, you will see there is a blue color here. There is a red color here. And then all the color combinations that were specified during the style update can be seen here. This is in the documentation, so you can see it more clearly what we just did in this place. We can also change the layout by using the update layout config. And this takes in two parameters. The first is the number of shapes that should be in a row. I can put one shape in a row and you will see that you just have one shape embedded in the row. And then the second parameter is the number of boundaries that should be in a row. I'm going to put that here and I'm going to say default, let it be one boundary. This is showing one, one. Let's change this number of shapes in a row to two. And you can see you have two shapes in a row here. If I change it to three, you can see that we have three shapes in a row. This is what the shape in a row does. And also the number of boundaries in a row, you will see that each of the boundary are in one row. Those elements that are in a boundary are in one row. But you can maybe, for instance, this number of shapes are just two and this is two. If we change the boundaries in a row to two, you would see that it squished these two into a row. The, these two boundaries are in a row. Again, you can go to the documentation to see how this is laid out. And then the code, the code is also in the documentation for you to see how it is laid out for you. You can check out my full video tutorial on Udemy titled Mastering Mamed JS Diagram, Charts, and Data Visualization, which teaches in-depth course on different Mamed JS diagram and chart implementation. Check out the link in the description for more details.